This is a story about a dream coming true. The 480 kilometer Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway, running across the vastness of East Africa, has, with its construction, created over 46,000 jobs and contributes 1.5% to Kenya's annual economic growth. The railway will usher in a new era for Kenya and bring great changes to local people's lives. Nairobi, the capital of Kenya and one of the biggest cities in Africa, is home to the country's top talent. My name is Concilia Wire. I am 23 years old. I'm electrical engineer by profession. Right now, I'm going through a training as a locomotive driver and a locomotive technician. I normally arrive at work at around 7.30 to about 7.40 a.m. in the morning. Concilia Were is one of the eight female trainees at the Nairobi terminus of the Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway. These women were, through rigorous testing, selected from almost 100 candidates. They're slated to become the first group of female locomotive drivers in the history of Kenya. The railway will open to traffic in less than three months. Today, they will practice on the locomotive under the guidance of their Chinese instructors. Okay,你们之前的学习和练习都非常的好。肯尼亚总统将会乘坐手套旅客列车。那么只有两个人会成为他的司机。你们的路还很长，希望你们再接再厉。好，我们开始今天的练习。I've always given it my best shot, so just as to make sure that among the two people or the one person that will be chosen to drive the first passenger train, I will be among that people. Now we're going to start. We're going to check the signal. 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 Tuju Sin, from Hubei province, has worked as a supervising driver for over 10 years in China. Now, he spends his days teaching Concilia and her fellow trainees. Concilia and her fellow trainees will practice a gradual speed up and slow down of the train. Train engineers must follow a set of standard operating procedures. The throttle and braking systems are far more complex than those found in a car. It's a very huge responsibility. You have to be very careful when you're driving the passenger train. The life of very many people depends on you. After the official opening of the rail line, the locomotive, weighing 138 tons, will haul 17 carriages with a total of 1,658 seats. The train is subject to huge inertia at each start and stop. It must be controlled at specific speeds on slopes and curves and when pulling into a station. A steady start and accurate stopping place a huge demand on a driver's ability to calculate and control speed. Concilia's ability in calculation is strong since she majored in electronic information engineering in college. As for me, the pressure has uh, not been there. I'm used to the pressure that is being exerted in the engineering field. Tuju Sin grades their performance during the practice run, which will help decide who will drive the passenger train 
for its maiden trip. This is the dispatch center at the Nairobi terminus, the brain of the Mombasa-Nairobi standard gauge railway. In this center, the cutting edge systems are comparable with those designed for Chinese high-speed railways. Train operation data flows in and converges here. On the display screen, the train driven by Concilia is just a blip on the screen. It is through the remote central signal control system that dispatchers send instructions to each train. I am just Peter Mutembe Diongo. I am coming from Meru County. There, before I go to school, I was farming. Farming is not enough to feed my family because I was, I was, I was not even getting unable to get a, a work. Jospita is 43 years old. He worked as a driver and then at a company for two years. After that, he went back to farming until the Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway project commenced in December of 2014. Many local laborers were recruited for constructing the rail line. Jospita was one of them. Thanks to a three-month training program provided by his Chinese supervisor, Jospita has become a crane operator at the railway's Section 9 project site office. Deng Chaozhong, Jospita's supervisor, comes from Chongqing in southwest China and works as a mechanical engineer at the railway's Section 9 project site office. The Section 9 project site office is tasked with erecting 5,844 electric poles within 14 months. Along the rail line, a potent power supply, communication and information network will be developed, comprising of a total of 12 power distribution substations, 87 telecommunications towers and over 1,300 kilometers of optical fiber cable. This robust network will ensure the smooth operation of the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway. Today, Jospita will operate the crane by himself. Jospita will erect the utility poles with the crane mounted on a truck. A pole is 15 meters long and weighs about one and a half tons, which is almost as heavy as a small lorry. Safety is of paramount importance. Lift the pole, it was my first time. So it was very hard for me to lift like this and it, it can be broken. Slow down, apple, apple, smaller, 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 apple. Okay. Precisely placing the pole at the designated point is another challenge for the team. The allowable variation between the designated positioning point and the actual one mustn't exceed two centimeters. Well done. Okay. Deng is a very good master, a very good teacher. Tell me this is a mistake. Repeat again. And he taught me very, very nicely. Chinese people, they are not mean. What is in their heart, in, in their heart, they do give us. After he secured the job, Jospita brought his wife to Nairobi and opened a hair salon with this income. I opened the salon because of this project. It's brought me up in a very great way. I have seen a very great changes in my family. While Jospita helps his wife run the hair salon, his instructor, Deng Chaorong, is giving a haircut to a colleague. On the construction site, things like haircuts are normally done by the Chinese workers themselves. I
Nearly 3,000 Chinese workers participated in the construction of the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway. Most of them are engineers or managers with rich experience in railway construction. Since the construction period was shortened from five years to two and a half years, they often work overtime to make sure things stay on schedule. Most of them only get one vacation a year back to China. I am uh, Eric Aberi Masenge, 40 years old. Come from Kenya. I live in Nairobi. Eric has been into engineering ever since he was a child. When he was admitted to college, he chose civil engineering as his major. Over the last 17 years since graduation, he's sold bus tickets and driven taxis, but never landed a job in the engineering field. Whatever little I, I got from the taxi driver, I would buy a newspaper daily just to source for a vacancy so that I can move to a better job. When I was uh, driving taxi, I, I believed that there is a future ahead of me. I was ambitious that the future will be brighter than what I was doing. Eric's dream came true on the Mombasa-Nairobi railway project. He was employed as a line defect detector. His Chinese supervisors taught him all they knew about railway line inspection and maintenance. Cooperation and collaboration among workers will be required after the railway begins operating. Eric's work plays an important part in keeping the railway operational. Take, take this line. Can you see? The head, the joint is somewhat small problem. Yes. Each time the train passes, subtle changes to the rail take place. The accumulation of these changes will undermine the safe operation of the trains. We are checking the alignment of the railway, the levels lifting the railway on, on rectifying the defects and even making the ground solid by thumping the ballast of the railway for safe, smooth operation of the train. Eric and his colleagues must regularly inspect and maintain all the facilities along the line. After the railway opens to traffic, seven maintenance workshops will be set up along the railway and over 300 line defect detectors will be posted to different sections to perform inspection and maintenance work. The maintenance team which Eric works for is just one of many for the railway. The smooth operation of the train requires the concerted efforts and coordination of workers at around 100 different posts in five major systems. They are locomotive operations, train operations, line maintenance, signaling and telecommunication, and vehicle maintenance. To prepare for the operation of the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway, China Road and Bridge Corporation collaborated with the Railway Training Institute in Kenya, along with prestigious universities and colleges in China, to carry out comprehensive training covering all jobs in railway operation. During the construction period, as many as 1,122 Kenyan technical and management personnel were trained, accounting for 86% of the operations staff. In the future, even more Kenyans will be trained for operations positions at the railway. Near the Nairobi terminus of the railway is the village of Dobuno Darfur, which more than 400 Maasai call home. A nomadic people, the Maasai maintain a rather primitive lifestyle. Some, however, are trying to settle down, and their children have begun receiving a modern education. <laughs> Maasai, 
just back from school, Isaiah Matape joins the villagers to prepare some gifts. A single necklace is comprised of over 10,000 Maasai beads. Threading them is never an easy task. Isaiah and the villagers are making the necklaces as gifts for the people who are helping them. A few months ago, Chinese construction workers at the Nairobi terminus found that children from Dubuno Darfur village often wandered on the construction site while school was in session. Yang Liang, from Heilongjiang province, is the deputy manager of the Section 8 project site office for the railway and is responsible for human resource management and liaison work. After two weeks, Yang Liang and his colleagues finished the construction of the new school, complete with 80 sets of desks and chairs. The new school has eight classrooms and a playground, where 150 children can have class at the same time. A two-hour trip to school has now been cut to a mere five minutes. To improve the learning environment for children as much as possible, Chinese builders have also installed 1,100 meters of pipelines nearby the campus, as well as two water tanks with a capacity of 10 cubic meters each. This way, villagers won't have to trek five kilometers for water during the dry season. The, the relationship between the Chinese and the, the Ma community has become very large. Now that they have brought us education, which it was very hard for us to access it, and we, we are also trying to find a way of making also them happy the way they have made us happy. During the construction of the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway, the Chinese constructed three schools as gifts to local residents and sponsored more than 220 public service events, benefiting over 13,000 Kenyans. It's January 2017. Concilia and her fellow trainees have spent nearly one year in training as locomotive engineers. It's now time to be fitted for their uniforms Taking Kenya's climate into consideration, Chinese tailors created a style of uniform blending both international and African elements. Even though Concilia and her fellow trainees will put on their new uniforms, the drivers for the train's maiden trip have yet to be chosen. On that day, when we are given the uniform and the badge is there, and the badge is indicated you are a locomotive driver. It will be the best feeling for me. Okay, together. One, two, three. During this time, diesel locomotives imported from China arrive at the Mombasa port in rapid succession. With a traction force reaching 2,600 tons each, the 56 locomotives are equipped with microcomputers for automatic control and have been upgraded to adapt to the tropical savanna climate of Kenya. They are a symbol of Chinese engineering prowess. With the locomotives delivered, 
the countdown to service readiness begins. Before the railway officially opens, Chinese engineers need to perform a comprehensive inspection of the railway system. In February 2017, dynamic detection and service tests were launched, which test the engineering quality of the project and the team cooperation and coordination before operational readiness is given the green light. Uh, Forty-nine-year-old Chen Xin, who hails from Hubei province, serves as the deputy chief engineer at the Communication Signals Institute of China Academy of Railway Sciences. He's been working in the railway industry for 26 years and is in charge of the dynamic detection and testing of the Mombasa-Nairobi Railway. Today, the final dynamic detection for the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway will be performed. At 9 a.m., Eric, a line defect detector, also boarded the test train. It's his team that will maintain the line after the rail goes into operation. This is the first time for me to get into SDR train, especially now I'm inside uh, the train. It was a happy moment for me. The test train Chen Xin's team boarded is complete with machine vision detection and artificial intelligence technologies, capable of collecting real-time data. Hey, yes, how are you? Uh, this yes, sir. Yeah. And you, we the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway is designed for an operating speed of 120 km an hour. The test train, which runs at around 132 km an hour, should spot and identify any defects or hazards on the rail line. Things are tense because nobody can say for sure whether or not the railway will pass the test. At 5 p.m., the test was completed, and the data indicates that all indexes conform to standards. Upon the completion of three months of tests, all facilities and operational systems of the Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway are service ready. On May the 31st, 2017, the opening ceremony of the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway will be held at the Mombasa Terminus. Two and a half years of blood, sweat and tears will finally be over. Everyone is looking forward to this moment. Unveiling a flag and a monument for this project, Makoti. At 10 a.m., the ceremony officially begins. State Councillor Wang Yong, Special Envoy of Chinese President Xi Jinping and Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta are in attendance. I want to take this opportunity 
to express my own personal gratitude of the people of the great Republic of Kenya to His Excellency President Xi Jinping and the people of China for the collaborative support that has resulted and culminated in this day and in this celebration. At 11.10 a.m., the first passenger train leaves Mombasa, headed for Nairobi. Such a moment will never be forgotten. It means a lot, especially to Concilia, because she's worked so hard for this day. For 45 million Kenyans, the historic moment they've been waiting for has finally arrived. Just knowing that on the passenger coach back there, you are driving the president. The whole of the country, the whole of Africa, they are looking upon you. It's an exciting feeling. Seventy-nine bridges and 33 stations have been built along the 480-kilometer-long railway. Nearly 3,000 Chinese and 46,000 Kenyans spent over a thousand days, finally managing to transform a hundred-year dream into reality. The quality being done by the Chinese actually is world class. That it will create an economic corridor that will help to transform the life of people in this country that will contribute enormously to our GDP. We have a lot to thank CRBC for going out of their way to help the communities. Even in making sure that uh, the local, local economy uh, participate in the project. This project has become the benchmark, the best example to Uganda, you know, Rwanda, and Southern Sudan, because they plan to do their own projects. We also embark today on a new chapter in Kenya's history that will begin to reshape the story of Kenya for the next hundred years. <laughs>